Hello and welcome to Talking TSM, the Game House's talk show about TSM's LCS team. Robert Haynes, hostest and the mostest and the guide uh, <laughs> for, for your TSM information. So, yeah, I'm here today um, and I'm excited. I am, how do I put this? I know that last week wasn't great and that that is what it is, but I think this is an opportunity this week for TSM to really get their minds right and get themselves ready. They've seen already who may arguably be the best team in the LCS again arguably we're going to get to know that for sure here in about two weeks uh, a week from I guess Sunday when TL takes on C9 but they've they've they, they've they've seen a great team and they know what they need to do they know what they need to work on so yeah, let's let's head into it uh, real quick. We will have a guest segment, um, one of TGH's own, who writes about evil geniuses, um, and I will be talking about the matchup, about the team, maybe about some other stuff. So we'll see. But yeah, it will be coming out here pretty soon. Um, you know, or not coming out. He'll be on very soon. So. Let's just start. Let's just start off real quick by, you know, how how I'm thinking we're gonna do this is, game one, game two, like last time, like last week, and then I'll have my discussion with Michael, and then I will, uh, you know, once our conversation's over, I will head into the advantages, disadvantages, the keys to victory, the champions to watch, and my final prediction. So, a lot to get through today. And what I will imagine will be a, a fun uh, and, and probably longer than anticipated conversation because um, I think it I think it'll be just a good conversation and you know why cut off good conversation but uh, yeah so starting off I wanted I went back again and I looked at you know games one and two for TSM against Evil Geniuses we didn't have the two O against them like we did against Team Liquid going in. Um, so there were some things that we could learn from it. Uh, but funny enough, I learned a lot more, I think, in game one than I did in game two. I think game two was just sloppy. Uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, in game one, TSM really showed, you know, their their first consistent time of, of being like, hey, the Azir, the Kai'Sa, the Nar, and the Galio, like, we can run these four champs and just take it to you, right? And And, and, and we saw that. Power of Evil, 6-2-2, and two. Lost, 4-2-9. and nine. Hoonies, uh, Nar, 4-2-11. and 11. Sword Art had a... Uh, had 13 assists and only one death. He he was all over the place, um, and he was helping TSM get vision during this game a lot. And, you know, a lot of this game came down to PoE having a really big uh, fight around the Drake. And then the rest was history. Uh, it was around the third Drake of the game. What would end up being the second one for TSM. Uh, second and the last one, honestly. And so this was this was huge for him. You know, you get the you get the quadra kill and, and TSM get a full wipe. They only lose uh, Spica in the process and they secure the Drake. And after that, you know, it was it was over. And this was right around what? Right around 20 minutes. So, you know, they, this is when they start showing their mid-late game prowess. Because this was... What week was this? Um, I want to say this was week three. Again, something I should have had before. But I didn't think I was going to need, need it. I just didn't think so. Yeah, game... Yeah, it was week three. It was the first game of week three. It was a Friday. They just come off of a three-game winning streak uh, against Golden Guardians, Team Liquid, and Immortals the week before. So, 
pretty good stuff there to say the least. Um, overall, when looking at this draft, I felt like TSM um, had a solid draft. Again, I think the Galio, the Azir, and the Nar were able to disengage from anything that um, evil geniuses were trying to do. You know, if it was Sven Skaren running in, uh, if it was the ultimate uh, coming in from Defly on Samira, you know, although she's like dead champ now, right? Uh, and even the Rel. You know, there, there wasn't a way for them to really stick to TSM without an Azir alt, a Nar alt, if, if it was available, or even a Galio taunt. Um, so Lost could have free free fire. Uh, PoE could do the same to protect himself. And Speaker was able to do something. He, he really was pretty... Uh, uh, he had a pretty uneventful game, in my opinion. But that's okay. Um, Sven made some pretty questionable plays. Uh, on probably the most important champion for this team, they really needed the Hecarim to to be that engaged, to give them the room for Deathly to come in, uh, and for the Rel to come in, and for Jazuka to be able to stand back and Impact to set up his barrels and everything. It just wasn't it wasn't a great fight for them, um, and there was just there it just the disengage. It's gonna be the one of the key factors that we talk about today. Um, and Jizuke was pretty much useless this game too. TSM banned the Renekton and they took the Nar, so you know they put impact on something that he's he's not really super comfortable with. Um, and you know when looking at uh, everything for this team, yeah, I mean, Impact is is a great player. Obviously, he is an All Pro selection, um, but there are definitely champions that he is stronger with than other ones, and and they're pretty easy for TSM to target. So, we'll see if that has an impact. Ha. <laughs> uh, that, we'll see if that affects their decision. There we go. Going forward. But then in game two, it was a bit of a different story. They, they ban out the Azir, the Olaf, and the Nar, which, you know, they didn't see the Olaf in, in their previous game, but Olaf is pretty much just straight ban against Spica most of the time. Uh, you know, this was right around the time people were like, hey, we're not going to give the Azir to Power of Evil. And they didn't want to deal with the Nar from Huni, just like TSM were like, hey, we're not going to deal with the Renekton. So they didn't. <laughs> and um, EG, yet again, go heavy engage. Aatrox, not great engage, but bulky frontline has a bit of a dash, you know, can jump in with his Qs. Uh, and when he alts, obviously he gets really fast. You have, yet again, the Hecarim uh, being able to run in. The Echo can die very, very, very well. Rel is very strong in that regard. And they picked well for Deathly because Zaya just can't be dove onto. Uh, and TSM did not have, in my opinion, enough of disengage. Some people would disagree with me. I, I don't see Lilia as, as a disengage champion. I, I, I see her, sure, like, if y'all run into her and she gets a Q off and then her R, then, yeah, absolutely she can do that. Or if she gets her, you know, W off or her E, you know, her uh, roly-poly ball, sure, I, I, I understand. It's just, she's just so squishy. It's not like she's able to absorb a lot of the pressure and then get get these abilities off before she's dead. You know, because that's the thing is like, sure, you'll you'll see it a lot. Like, right, like uh, Alilia will be playing. Everybody's like, okay, you know, this is okay. Disengage. She'll get jumped on by the Hecarim and, and some other stuff. And then she'll get her Q off or maybe her E or whatever. But then she dies before the Lilting Lullaby either matters or even before it, it, it starts. And so it's really hard for me to see that as a form of, of true disengage. Now, the rest of TSM, you know, you've got Huni on the Scion, which, God bless, I hope we never see that again. Um, and uh, Swordar on the Alistar. You know, the Alistar kind of reminds me of the Gnar when he's your only form of engage or disengage. You're not going to win many games. He wasn't the only form, but I didn't think it was, was good enough. And, and the Scion, you know, I don't think that Huni really played it all that well. And especially he can't match the Aatrox in the side lanes most of the time, especially when he's down as far as he was. It just, the draft didn't feel great. Um, 
there 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 isn't even much follow up when when Huni would be able to run in with his alt. I, I I barely even remember seeing him use the alt. It was just a a mess. Um and and to be honest, I just don't think I when I watched this game and I know TSM go two and one in this this week, but when I watched this game, I sat there and I was like. They're playing so nonchalant. It didn't seem like they cared that much during this game. And I'm sure I'm wrong, but it just felt that way. You know, they just had this really big week uh, of running the gauntlet, you know, of, of 100 Thieves, C9, and Dignitas. And then they head into this week, and they kind of let their guard down because, you know, they get EG, Immortals, and Golden Guardians. And so you're just like, eh, well... We want to prepare for, for playoffs, I guess. Maybe that's what they were thinking. Uh, although, had they gotten an extra win, they maybe would have been able to play Hunter Thieves in the first round. I don't know. A whole bunch of stuff that happened. This game was just not good overall. I personally do not feel like this game was an indicator of how Evil Geniuses and TSM will normally go. You can disagree with me. That is fine. I just I just don't think that they had a great draft, and I, I think they just had one of their worst games of the season. They just didn't play well. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's just that simple. I mean, they still drew it out to almost 40 minutes. I mean, they lost 16 kills to four. They lost by 16,000 gold, and they still lasted for almost set 40 minutes. And they never killed Impact, Jazuke, or Deathly. There's no reason this game should have gone past 25 minutes. None. Nada. But they hung in there. And they just bled themselves out. And, uh, yeah, they moved on. You know, and, and TSM had two losing lanes. I, I know that Sion is a beefy boy. He can stay up there for a long time. I don't see that being a great matchup into Aatrox. And the Victor, especially, you know, with the with the Echo is not great. Um, and, and that's going to be something we're going to have to watch for counter pick rate, you know, counter pick wise for POE. He is counterable. You know, we saw it last week with, with the Ari, with the Silas, with an echo. Those are three champions that could be terrifying for TSM. So they're gonna have to watch that. We'll have to see what happens. But with that, I believe we're going to head into our next segment. Let me make sure that Michael is ready. And now we're going to head over to what I prefaced at the beginning, where uh, I'm going to be having a, a fellow TGH rider, the one who is covering the team that we are playing this week. I have Michael Termini here. Hello, hello. How's it going? It's going all right, going all right. I'm excited because uh, these are two of my favorite teams uh, in the LCS, so it's going to be fun seeing them go head to head in five. Oh yeah, it is definitely going to be interesting. Um, and 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 our goal today is going to be, you know, I, I wanted to have him on for at least a little bit of a section. Um, you know, he offered, and I was like, oh yeah, like this sounds great. Um, and I'm hopeful I'll get to do it in the future as well. But we're, we wanted to talk mostly about the 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 matchup to watch, and I think we're kind of on the same page with it. Um, the Spica versus Spence Scarin matchup. And I think there's a, there's a lot to look into here, but I want to start with with you, Mike. Like, what are you looking at in this matchup in particular? I think Spica is frankly having an awful, and that's why I think this is the matchup. Um, me and you have actually talked about this briefly before, Nat. Uh, uh, Spica's stats have just been not very solid. Like, uh, I'm writing an article for tomorrow. Some stuff that I was looking at is Spica's ninth in the LCS for KP, 61.8. He's mm -hmm. minus 38 gold difference at 10, minus 52 gold uh, XP difference at 10, and minus 1.9 CSD. His damage per minute is eighth in the league as well. Like, mm -hmm. Spica's stats are just awful and, and i don't think Spica's an awful player i just think he's going through a little bit of a rut um just like you know how like tactical has had a, a mass split over on team liquid it doesn't mean you know someone's awful because they're having a, a couple bad games i just think this is what 
both teams should be looking at and attacking on the same side. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And and I think that, yeah, like you said, we've talked about it. And I I have said on this podcast, I think Spika is a, an extremely good player, and he is going to end up being Absolutely. one of the best players in the LCS. The problem that I have is, and I know that stats don't always tell the whole story, but I think the the one you pointed out, right? Kill participation. Mm-hmm. I I cannot express how important that is, in my opinion. And I agree. You know, it's it's it is probably in in my opinion as a jungle that is the most important stat because you you know as a jungler you have free roam. Right, your goal is to get your lanes ahead while they are focused on facing their one on one. So yeah. if kills are happening away from you because it's something like TL, right, where they are very focused in the bot lane on getting kills early, that's a different story. But like with TSM, they're a low kill team overall. Like they they very much do not have high kill um amounts. But like mm-hmm. When your kill participation is that low, it, it's rough. It is really rough. And it's something yeah. that, that Sven Skaren has not been known for. He has always been known for being the catalyst to help his team get better. And so Sven, yeah. Sven is is kind of the opposite. Yeah. Like Sven has been known for all of his time on a C9, just kind of making nutty engages mm-hmm. and looking for plays. And and honestly, like I think Spika was a lot more of that last year. I agree. Yeah. I, but I also think there is some truth to what you said, like that TSM isn't a high kill team, right? Uh, they don't really have a single lane I would call a kill lane, right? Like, yeah. Uni is is sometimes maybe, but Power of Evil, I don't really think of as getting solo kills in mid lane. Not saying he's a bad player. I think Power of Evil is the best mid laner in the LCS. In my opinion. But I don't think of him as getting solo kills early, right? Nor do I think that with, uh, with um, Lost and Sword Art, right? Yeah, yeah. They just don't have people that strike me as those solo kill machines. No, absolutely. It's like Hooney's maybe the only one and lost depending on the champion he's on. But like looking yeah. at last year's kill participation for Spika specifically, during the LCS summer split, 73.4%. During the LCS playoffs, almost 75%, 74.9%. This year, so far, he is, during the regular season, 61.9%. And then during the playoffs, 67.3. The game they won, 100% kill participation. I think, like... <laughs> wow, I that, didn't know that. That's crazy. Actually. Yeah, like, it's, 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 it is such an important factor for this team. And I said it at the very beginning of the year. I was like, if this team's going to win games, Spika has to be that guy. Like, I think it was either Aaron or Benjamin who were on. And they were like, you know, I this team plays well as a team, but individually... Like you were just saying, like I actually don't, I actually don't think that Poe played like the best mid laner, and that's a topic for a different day. I didn't even have him in my top three. Um, wow. I I think there's there's a lot to it, and I think if you do a statistical breakdown, and I think if you actually watch a lot of their games, like I think the thing with with people right now is they they put so much credence on if somebody's dying or if somebody's feeding, right? Because that's what they're used to in solo queue and everything else, but. You know, just because Spika or Power of Evil aren't dying, it doesn't mean that they're also making plays, right? It doesn't mean that they are finding yeah. ways to get ahead in lane or, or you know, through the jungle. And it's like Spika is constantly behind on CS. You know, he he he, and he's he's going in like during this past weekend. He went in. They had just gotten a kill on Alfari on his Aatrox. It was in game four, and he tries to do this. No, it was game. It was game three. Yeah, it was game three, the one they won with Hecarim, right? And he like they just killed Alfari on his Nar, and they're and they're fighting over the the rift. But realistically, there's four of TSM in the top lane, and then there's the the other four of um, TL coming up to try to get the rift. And and instead of and they they end up losing this fight like substantially because Speaker tries to go in and do a drive by rift steal. And it's like, it's like, dude, why? You just got the kill. They could have easily yeah. just gone top lane and pushed the tower down. And it's early enough to where it's like, that's, that's a trade where it's like, yeah, you get the tower gold, you get the tower gone, and that's worth the same amount as trying to go after the rift. So mm-hmm. 
you know, he's going to make mistakes. He's young. He's going to get better. But I want to flip this over now to Sven Skaren because Sven Skaren has also been hit or miss, right? Like, yeah, he's absolutely. had games where he's been outstanding, but then he's had games where it's like, bruh, like, what is going on right now? And so I want to know, like, what have you been seeing this year and, and, and where are some areas uh, that we should be looking at? Uh, okay, so the biggest thing about EG is that I think – I think this isn't like a hot take or anything, but Impact and their bot lane have been very stable. Um, they've been actually performing very well in almost every game. Um, I think Impact has been the standout performer, but Jazuke and Sven Skarin have had a an interesting split, to put it nicely. Um, Sven, in particular, has been doing some just awful plays in terms of positioning. Uh, they're like a, a great example is look to his Dr. Mundo. Now, Mundo is a hard character to catch, right? Mm -hmm. He has high tenacity. He's slippery. He has heal. He has slows. He's hard to like stay on. And if he pops R, he should be able to get away. But Spence Scarin was consistently overextending into the enemy jungle in positions where he just flat out shouldn't be with the priority status of his lane. So like he's in their jungle with no mid lane prio and no bot lane prio bot side. And then he gets caught and then he dies. Like that has been the tale of Sven Scare. Uh, like I don't think Sven Scaren's mechanics are bad. I, I, obviously not. I think his champ pool is very, very big. But it's just, I, I don't know how, I don't know what's causing these, these errors in positioning. And I honestly, if you clean that up on Sven Scaren, I think he's, he's like top half, a top half jungler easily. Oh, but absolutely. the way that he is right now, it's just you're left question pinging half the time, you know? Yeah, and I think that that's part of the team too because, like, when I look at it, like, Impact – when I look at EG as a whole, right, and I'll get to the Sven Scaren part, but, like, from my perspective, they started off really hot. Mm -hmm. And then I actually think Deftly has been the most consistent player on the team, which is I crazy agree. to say. I, dude, Deftly is not getting – any credit and it's an absolute shame i like, had him in my top five i i just think the is, problem was like neo and a couple others were just really good but i actually yeah. put him in my top five because i think he had a really good split but like definitely yeah definitely is he he's finally proven he deserves to be here which i'm super happy for but it's like i don't know if you know this now i want to make sure i'm right on this before i claim it but i'm almost yeah. certain that you guys had the second most amount of deaths uh, I actually don't In know team deaths, team deaths, but uh, yeah, I, I can very well see that. I know Jazuke and uh, actually, dude, and it's not Jazuke were... as much. Do you know? I'm pretty sure who had the most deaths on your team was actually no. Nope. Let me make sure this is Sven. correct. It was Sven. No, that's not right. One second. I know. I know. Ignar has died a lot. I was looking at his stats the other day, and same thing with Jazuke. Amount too. No, it was um, it was it was it was Sven Scaren and then Impact actually. Yeah, wow. But Jazuke was actually, truthfully, Jazuke was pro. In my opinion, outside definitely was your most consistent, but your best player was Jazuke. Jazuke actually had a really nice mm -hmm. spring split. His kill rotation was great. He didn't die as much as he normally does. He had some of the most assists, and he won almost every one of his lanes. So I actually we Jizuke, put him second. Jizuke's great. Wow. Wow. All right. Just, okay. To counter that, Jazuke has a lot of great stats. I do agree he wins lane a lot of the time. He uh, He's often uh, splitting uh, the side wave, so he's always up on CS or XP. But the issue with him has not been whether he can pump out damage. Mean, he has the highest DPM of any mid lane. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been, can he, can he like do amazing plays or does he have great mechanics? It's been he hasn't been in the right spot. He's often been pushing side lanes, which mm -hmm. I again I actually think is a good thing. Yeah. But then he dies. And then EG gets nothing off. But see, that's not his fault. Like an, yeah, sometimes extent, he dies, extent, but like yes. but that's where the Sven Skarin talk comes in for me when looking at this matchup. Because I think the problem is when you're looking at EG when they're winning. It's because they are allowing Jazuke to do what he does best. Yes. Be that I agree. split pusher, right? Be that guy because then it's like if he does die in the top lane, that's fine because it's going to take two or three of them, which means you yeah. have a man advantage everywhere else. 
The problem with teams that I've been seeing a lot of is they don't understand how to play around the split push right now. And I think that that's where EG are falling into their traps, and that's where I think Sven Skarin has been making a lot of his mistakes as well. Is he's trying too much to get the get them ahead in areas where they don't necessarily need to make those risks. And so when I'm looking at your guys' team, so like in terms of team deaths, Golden Guardians are obviously going to be first. No yes. surprise there. Like I think you can kind of just throw that out. But like it's it's counter logic gaming at two seventy six and then evil geniuses at two sixty nine. Yeah, EG has a lot of a lot of int fiestas, that is most yeah. certainly and so, certainly true. you know, when I, when it comes down to it, I think with this matchup specifically between Spika and Svenskaren, it's going to be interesting to see if Svenskaren's over-aggression gets taken advantage of by Spika or if Spika's lack of aggression gets taken advantage of by Svenskaren. Because... Well, the way... Sorry. I don't no, know. no, no, you're good. Because, like, well, like, that's where we saw... In the game that TSM lost to EG... They they honestly were just kind of playing dead. They they were like dead fish. Yeah. They didn't care as much about that game. I think most people would agree. I think Evil Geniuses cared obviously a lot more, and they let Jazuke get his echo, which you're not going to beat most of the time if you don't have anything. And else also, to Impact to had an amazing that game to go on. A, I, that was the Aatrox game, correct? Um, that was the Impact yeah, Aatrox, Aatrox game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was one of his best I games know. of the split. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Impact. Like I said, I think Impact's the best player on it. That's my opinion. I think he's been nothing but a stable force. Absolutely. And uh, I, and just has consistently won top lane, no matter the matchup, given up draft priority in almost every single game, willing to blind pick. Like, I, I think I think Impact is outstanding. But uh, to circle back to the jungle thing, the way that EG needs to win this game, like, through the EG perspective is you have to ban out a couple champions, and it is target banning speed. You this think is, so? This is, in my opinion, how EG wins. Yes. I think you can, you if you literally target ban Hecarim, Olaf, Lilia, TSM's dead. Has it, has I don't know about that. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me make my argument. No, no, you go. I'm, I'm commenting. Yeah. yeah, you go. Spika on Udyr looked awful in those TL games, with Did the he? possible exception of the first game. He looked I don't great in the first he, game. I don't look that good the first game. I think he was. Is the rest of his team was doing well, which makes Udir look good. Okay, keep going. And then the rest of what else has Spika played all split? He's played some Skarner. Skarner right? looks great both games. Yeah. yeah, he did well in the. Uh, he won one Skarner game. He lost one Skarner game. Correct. He went, I think yeah, he won yeah, one he did. One. He went one on one. But, but Skarner, the second Skarner, game wasn't his fault. So yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. But, all right, so Skarner, right? What else has he played? Nidalee. Nidalee. That's he, his best champion. Nidalee, I don't think he's hot on Nidalee either, and I don't think Nidalee's that good right now. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, like 100 I'm pretty sure Santorin looked really good on Sant it. Just go. Look, I, I, I really think if you target ban his three best performing champs, which, again, if you look at win rates, if you look at play rate, he has overwhelmingly played Hecarim Molof. And, and the priority of that should be Hecarim. You should, it, you cannot let Spika get Hecarim. His best games have been on Hecarim. The comeback where he was behind a lot, the game that they won versus TL, have all been on Hecarim. That champion is disgusting, and if you're not planning on banning it, you gotta first pick it, right? So, you're right, but my biggest contradiction to you, my friend, is guess how many of Sven Skarin's wins are on those three champions? Oh, I agree. Seven. Seven of them. I agree. And he's not going to be able to play Graves. And he's not... Uh, I, here's the thing. I think that the jungle is too much the same for you to ban it yes. out. That's my yeah, there is, biggest There is a lot of... Yeah. And TSM won't, wouldn't be screwed because then you're giving TSM... If you do those three bans, right? To start. Because TSM so will normally... you're going to give Power People here, right? Yep. And you're giving... You're going to give uh, Kaisa, Kaisa to Lost. Yes. Yes. And then There's you're going to probably give Renekton or Nar to Huni, which have both been, they have one loss on the season and it's to TL in the playoffs. So like, that's a really big risk for you to take. I don't see any jungle bans and maybe the Hecarim ban at most. And if Olaf I, pops off in like one of the first games, then I can see one of the teams banning it. But I don't think this matchup is decided in pick and bans at all. I, I don't think that you I, can I, do that. Hmm. 
I think there's some truth to that. I don't think any game's over in pick or ban. Obviously, certain games are harder in pick and ban. Um, but, like, the, the thing is, through EG's perspective, what other lane or, or position are you going to attack and have a chance of winning? I think you have to split it. I, I don't think... I don't think... Hooney is going to, like, I don't think Impact is objectively better than Hooney. I don't think Jazuke is objectively better than uh, Power of Evil. No. I don't think their bot lane is objectively better. No. Nope. I think the only one that you can make an argument for this year has been Sven Skarin. I think that's and where that you're, is why, you're digging your hole, my friend, because I don't know that they have any winning lanes. that's why I think lanes. that's where you have to attack. <laughs> no, and, that, and that's the thing. So if you don't have any winning lanes, right? I would rather you coin flip a certain position and just try all inning on on what like I, I don't and I don't want to say like I said I don't think Speak is bad but he has been the worst performing player on TSM with maybe the exception of Lost. I don't even know. Lost has been really good. He has, but statistic his stats aren't great either. Um, they're not he's again. Top they're five not bad. in they're most pretty, things. Yeah, he's yeah he's pretty mid tier. Um, but like so. I don't see any other way EG wins this. And, and that's my thing. I'm actually, I think TSM's going to win. Uh, okay. I think there's, it's going to be a couple, couple uh, fun games. I think this whole series is going to be pretty fun to watch. Um, and through TSM's perspective, I think if you literally just ban Rise Echo, EG loses. See, that's where I was going to talk to you. I think, so since we're in prediction mode here, you know, we've gotten, we've gotten away just for those of you who are listening. I know we've been a little all over the place because we have a lot that we want to talk about. But I think the Sven Skarin and Spica matchup is going to be really important because it's it, for me, it's going to be also at Smite Fights, which Sven Skarin is normally really good at. So yeah, Spica's I, insanely good at it, too. Yeah, fair, well, yeah. sometimes. I don't know. He's been really shaky this year, in my opinion, on it. But, like, I do think that, that if Sven Skarin's aggression scares TSM, then it could be an issue. Because the thing is, is if, he's, if his aggression is correct and if Impact gets the right champion... And if Jazuke can play into that aggression correctly, that's where I think TSM lose. Because I actually think Jazuke is the biggest problem. Because while I I love Power of Evil, he's been one of my favorite players for a long time. He was one of my very first interviews. I've mentioned it on this show before. But mm-hmm. my biggest thing with him is against mid laners that we know that he's better than, which in your opinion is everybody else, right? He is yeah, not would- coming out with any leads he is not he he is under his tower he's he needs help right like sure he'll make some good roams and stuff but you have to be able to have lane pressure to be able to do that and so against jazuke if he's getting something you know like the echo if he's getting something like the rise if he's getting something i don't know let me see what else he played this year like i could see him pulling out the re pretty easily i mean you know even the yone yeah. Which TSM don't play Yone, right? Like, they just don't. So it's just <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like, so, like, if he pulls those out, even I can see him pulling out the Zoe, right? Like, there are a lot of things. Like, okay, Nico. He played the Nico, too. I know it went top lane, but it's like, you know, like, he can play a lot of these champions that I think are a problem. And we saw it in the TL game when they pulled out the Silas, which I know he plays. Like, you know, they mm-hmm. they pulled out the Ari. They pulled out... Uh, the, the Twisted Fate, which I don't think he plays Twisted Fate. But, like, you know, my, my point remains is that, like, while PoE was by far and away the best player in that series, it was not because of what he was doing necessarily in lane. And Jazuke is a player that can punish that a lot more than Jensen does. I still think Jensen is severely overrated. I think he had an outstanding series. But, like, watching him... Jensen did not have a good series. Yes. It, yeah, he yeah he like Jensen and 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 Power of Evil are like watching a wet noodle fight, like they're just beating <laughs> each other, but nothing's happening until they get into yeah. team fights, which is where they shine. Whereas Jazuke puts the pressure on the mid laner, and and I think that we we saw that a little bit in the EG game with with Jazuke on the Echo against Power of Evil on the Victor. Yeah, which is, he again, couldn't which is do why anything. They, all they have to do is ban it. Yeah, but like he'll. I'm telling you, I am confident that he will pull out that Ari because he saw how much they struggled with it, and he will probably pull out the Silas. Let me make sure for sure. And no, that, that he absolutely. I, I think yeah, he will. He'll definitely right. both, pull those. Both of those, because like, and especially with with uh, I, I've been 
very consistent praising Coach Dunn for EG. Mm-hmm. He's uh, been good. He is insane. He has an amazing history of, of weird picks and uh, bringing teams to championships, worlds, uh, whether it's on INTZ or Splice or Mad Lions. Like, he's done an outstanding job throughout every region he's gone to. And one of the things that he has consistently said is that they are going to be pulling out weirder picks. They're going to pull out champions that people normally don't think of that are unorthodox mm-hmm. and that he wants his team to win early aggression. Absolutely. Which is one of the reasons why, again, circling back to the speak of them, um, one of the things that I, I forgot to mention was early dragons. I, I, I know it's no secret that TSM has been struggling on Dragon this year. Ah, so I see you read my I see you read my piece. <laughs> right. Uh, or I just heard the commentators on the LCS <laughs> this weekend. Uh. That's because they read my piece. I, oh, I, yeah. I gave is, all is the that, stats. Is that the secret? Is dude, that the secret? Dude, I'm telling you, wow. sometimes they'll bring stuff up the next week after I've written it. I don't know if they're reading it, if you guys are reading or listening. I talked on this show, and I wrote about the fact that their early Drakes were – Awful this year. Awful. And Absolutely. EG, awful. on the other hand, first dragon percentage of 61 and mm-hmm. dragon percentage of 64. And what is what is uh, TSM's? It's like 40 something in both, if I recall. I think it's like 30. Is it? It's, uh, yeah, 39% first dragon and 48% dragon. So EG, if they want to win, they obviously have to win early, right? So they're going to win through mid lane aggression. They're going to have to. I mean, I don't, I don't see them really doing anything aggressive bot lane, to be honest. Maybe a Lethality Sivir or Callista Nico. Like, that's probably the most spicy you could get. But uh, other than that, like, bot lane's probably going to be standard. Maybe something nutty out of Impact. Like, Impact brought out his Aatrox, which was obviously really, really cool to see. Mm-hmm. Maybe a Mordekaiser out of him. Maybe I could see Jax. the Mord. Yeah, I, I don't the think Mord, we see Renekton. Is... I would be shocked I don't think if we, we see Renekton. I, I think... We could see Renekton in the right matchup. Um, really? I definitely could. I think he just gets banned. Yeah. I think he just gets banned uh, again, straight up. Again, if he doesn't, again, if he doesn't get banned. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, if he gets through in the right matchup, they'll probably choose him. His Nar will probably come through. But like again, you're not gonna see much spicy out of those lanes. It's gonna be on mid and jungle. And I want to see more picks like the Mundo, even though it was so awful in the games that they played it. It shows that they're, they want to do something different. They want to try to catch a team off guards. And I would not be surprised if we get some more unorthodox jungle picks. Like maybe something like a Jarvan. Maybe something like... I've been uh, calling for Jarvan I mean, all damn season. I've, I've, I've been maybe, wanting maybe that all Kane year. Kane again. Yeah, Kane has been uh, something that I don't think EG has played it. Or if they did, I just don't recall. But Kane has been having some solid performances in not just the LCS, but the LCK, the LEC, the LPL. He's been played everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I, I can very well see them trying to put Sven Skarin on something nutty aggressive, especially if it's game three and they're down two. Wow. Like, I think that is what's going to be the most exciting. If, if the series goes down 2-0, TSM's up, I think that game three is going to be some nutty picks out of it. Well... That kind of leads us into the very last part of this section, bro. What is your final prediction and why? 3-1 TSM. Okay. I think I, I honestly think, like, EG could win this. I, I totally see a world in which EG wins this. I'll be honest, I really don't want that to happen. I kind of want to see TSM advance. Because uh, I, I don't know. I just think TSM's more fun. But... It, you know, it sucks. I think EG's the fourth best team in the LCS, but they got play sixth. I think they're better than 100 Thieves and Dignitas. I don't think they're, they're better not than gonna... Dignitas, but I, think I will let you keep going. Uh, but yeah, so it sucks. I really would love to see them win a best of five, right? But I don't think they beat TSM. I think they're gapped in every position but possibly one. And like I said, the way they win is by doing something unexpected. And I just don't see any other way. I think they have enough individual skill that it's not a, a whitewash that they can win a game. Mm-hmm. But I cannot see them winning a, winning the series. EG's been one and one with every team ranked above them, but Dignitas, funny enough. Um, so they, they can clearly take games off the best of the best in the games, right? Yeah. But can they take a series? I don't. 
<laughs> and that's where I'm just, I, I'm left kind of, I'm left in this awkward position because I don't really know how good Evil Geniuses is watching them 18 games. And it's so weird. So I see them losing. Isn't that all the LCS? So that's why I'm I'm fine with more games. I know people don't like it, and I know we've had a talk about that too, but like, that's why I'm really excited for next split because tw- I think 27 games is going to be perfect. I think we're going to really be able to kind of figure out who's actually good. Um, and also an 18 playoffs, which is exciting. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of I good like, stuff. A lot of good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I just want to see – I want to see BO5s from some of the other teams because, like, I don't think – a lot of the uh, – lower lower tier teams this split i don't think are as bad as they look some games right so oh, i would absolutely. love to see them get a chance in a in a series versus some well yeah i mean i love it and so i i will say for those of you who are like oh maybe rob's gonna give his predictions now you're wrong you're gonna get it at the end of the show but to comment on yours i i think that your mindset is in the right spot i guess that's a bit of a spoiler alert um and I'll talk about this later in the podcast, but like I do believe that TSM gap pretty hard at every position. So, yeah, you know, I I, I do think Sven Skarin could be potentially a little bit better depending on the day. But I yeah. maybe maybe Huni Impact. I I think that's the only other one you could do. Oh um, yeah, actually no, that's that's definitely one. I think when I I, I love it, SKT versus SKT top. Yeah, no, you're probably right there. Funny. I just think Impact fell off so hard at the end of the year, honestly. Uh, Dude, he started I mean, dying a lot. I mean, yeah. a lot. And listen, it's once not all about kills and deaths. Once the Gorge Raker came through, yeah, yeah not, he just not looked as well. But yeah. he's also had some. He's also been on like Narmor, which is more like get up in your face, set up for the rest of your team. Oh, for sure. Um, and he, he's been he's been doing some weird stuff. They threw him on mid lane that one game, which was very weird. I don't know why they did that. But no, they did it. they're trying weird um, things, like you said. Yeah, that that like I said, that's the that's the coach done gap right there. Uh, <laughs> you guys <laughs> got the for your own team. Gap. Yeah, you guys got the <laughs> you guys got the beard gap. Uh, we got that. Also, I, I just want to throw this out here before before we end this. Mm-hmm. Um, if TSM drafts as awful as they did versus TL. Whoa, 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 I whoa, think, whoa. I what? think there's a good chance. I think TSM's They won three of those four drafts. Disagree. Hard disagree. Wait, okay, that. we're taking five more minutes on this. Well, okay, let me, pull, let me pull up the drafts again. What are, you, right? what are you smoking, dude? What? Hard, hard losses. No right, way. Pull, pull okay, game up. one. Game All one, right. TSM have an, a near-perfect draft, right? Because no matter... What happens with the hacker I'm trying to run in with the with the Oriana ball, right? You can either Azir him out, stun him with Spica because he's just gonna be full on tank, yeah, or Seraphine all. Game one was good draft. Yeah, and there's there, they should have they they should have won this game. Tactical was utterly useless. Then we go into game two, right? The this double the rumble one, right? Yeah. So like here's here's how I look at this, right? There's only one front line on all of TL. Right, so yeah. if, if T and TSM have double marksmen and and a rumble that can trap them, right? There's there's no way for you to how do I put this? Like even if Jensen and and Tactical were to get in on TSM, right? Like had Huni and 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 Th- Sword Art honestly, Sword Art had a terrible season or ter- not season a uh, uh, series in my opinion, but like. You look at this draft, like they have they have the late game scaling, they've got plenty of front line, they have the AP through Huni that's also gonna scale really well. Uh, and where's their sorry, where's their front line? Thresh Udir. Udir Udir Thresh is a front line? Absolutely it is. How no. is it not? That's see that's where I disagree. I don't it's think more than Udyr. it's way more than just one Nautilus. That's I, for sure. I agree it's more than one Nautilus. But the rest of their draft is awful. You have du- okay. You have a squishy ass rumble. Oh, oh sorry. A squishy okay. rumble. A squishy Aphelios. A squishy Lucian. Okay. Versus two characters that could one shot squishies. That is Jensen on uh, on Ari and Niddle. You have no peel in any way, shape, or form for the Aphelios or Lucian. 
What are you talking about? Rumble? You got the Thresh, you got the Thresh okay. peel, and you got the Udyr peel, and Udyr peel is like and Lost has his own peel, and, and so does Lucian. Lucian has his own peel too. Helios has no peel. Helios what? Has, his like, as his graviton his graviton gun is which is, is only more than up. Enough. It's only up one of his guns. One I of know. his five guns. So I know. If Gravitron's not up, he has zero forms of peel besides Red Gun maybe queuing backwards. But like, that's not enough peel for Av. You have zero, like it's just. This draft is so much harder to execute than TLs. Now that is true. Now that I you agree have, with you have you have to, you have to rely on Huni doing well on Rumble. You have to rely on mid lane not going awful. You have to rely on Udir getting ahead in Italy. Because if Nidalee's behind, she's useless. Everyone knows this. Well, and that's the, that was the problem. So you, she got have, the first three these, kills, and that's yeah, where so it went Yeah, so you have all bad. these things set up for TSM. And that only works if it goes a certain way. Ari if behind is still useful because Ari still has a charm, right? And, and charm's disgusting. Yeah, but it's so GP, easy for Lucian GP to die. GP behind still has his R. So he can still do cross map vaults. He can still set up barrel. He can zone with it. He still has so much damage in zoning. Versus Rumble, he has no way to lock down the targets for a good R. But see, like, he doesn't like, need just... to if the rest of the team is winning. When I was reviewing this game, TL, T, TSM just allowed for Santorin. Like, they just grouped up right next to each other, and then next thing you knew, Santorin and Jensen were fed. Like, if they played this better, where they were a little bit more spread out, and, like, Lost missed an alt, and yeah. Sword Art missed everything in that game. Yeah, and... they, like, look, this, this series was not played. I mean, not the series. This game was not played. I, again, but, like, I, I really think if you run the same draft... 10 times in a row, TSM maybe only wins two. Maybe three. I don't know. This, I don't this, know. We'll, the, the difficulty is so much more on We'll, TL, we'll on say TSM. maybe maybe one and one. But then game three, right. I think TSM um, definitely lost because I think the Silas was just the counter that they couldn't deal with. Yes, there was a disgusting counter pick. And, it and, was and very, even though they win well that done. game, I think that they lost the draft. Yes. So then we head into game four. Now here's the thing. I think, truthfully, I think that TSM win this game hands down if Huni goes tank. Because disagree. Well, I think you just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Here's all right, why. All right. right? Give me. Look at all the damage sources coming out of of Team Liquid. Right. AD, AD, AD. Yep. And then even Jensen, while he is AP, right? Like, there's no real damage outside of the Sivir. Yes. Right. And so if if and and the thing is is like. If Huni goes tank, he can match Alfari in a side lane, which is all you need. Because the problem is, is like you can you can let Jensen go do his own thing. That's fine, but like if if he can't match Alfari, then they lose. And we saw that right because Alfari took over the game. But if Huni goes tank, there's nothing that they can do because TSM had Drake control, and eventually TL would have had to match them because they would have only been able to get like a true advantage in one lane. Otherwise, the rest of it would have stalled. And then in a team fight, there's no way that TSM lose. There's just no way. But the problem was is Lost missed a ton of his pullback feathers. Sword Art again got beat out in Vision, which was pretty unfortunate. Power of Evil actually played Sword a pretty Art, good yeah. game. Spica was okay. But then the Huni Gragas, like I understand that they felt like they needed an AP source, but there was nothing that's, that's the that Team Liquid had that would make me scream. Like Santorin would have been the only thing maybe that could have been a problem, but he... You, you know, in terms of, well, like, Alfari, building Alfari super tanky. also has the same issue as well. Like, like so if, if Huni goes uh, full tank, right? So mm -hmm. your main two damage sources are obviously Zaya Olaf, and then you have a Moonstaff Ser uh, Seraphine, right? Yep. So Moonstaff Seraphine still obviously does damage. Actually, a fair amount, because Seraphine's broken and should not ever be let through picker ban, but yeah. that's besides the point. Um, like, you still have primarily AD damage. So all Alfari and Santorin literally need to do is build Deadman's Plate and Thornman. Same thing with, with Kor. Kor can literally just build armor this game, and he, and he's already Leona, he's pretty tanky already. Like, it's hard to get through that. If you don't have damage, but that's where the loss, you try getting to That's where another... Lost is able to, and so Spica. Like, they both have true damage and, like, and, ability, and armor pen. So it doesn't really if, matter. If Lost is able to get to LDR and maybe four or five items late game, yeah, I would say it doesn't matter. 
but they didn't even get close to that. And I don't see how that changes. Well, Migos then if I'm honestly, and here's the other thing, I actually think they should have picked Rise. I think if they're going to go AP, I think Rise would have been better than Gragas for them. I see. Now, this is a game I would actually prefer uh, if, if they're going to go ever Rumble. Or Rumble. I think this is a Rumble, Rumble would have been game. fine too, yeah. Because you I get the this, lockdown yeah, from I, Nautilus. The, the Gragas pick too. is just awful here. Because because Cooney's put in an impossible spot with that pick. Oh, absolutely. So, like, that's it, my it, point, yeah. though. Is so, like, but that's what I mean. So, this is this is a draft that I think is, is impossible for TSM because they put Cooney in an impossible position. If, if, if a player has to decide whether I have to go tank or AP to win this game, then but the it's draft not even is to win. But it's not even to win the game. It's just to, to keep things even so the rest of your team can win it. And yeah, again, I mean, yeah. I've been on I mean, the I mean. I've been on the band I've been on the bandwagon for Hooney since day one. I love Hooney. I love. I Hooney. think he played really not day one. Sorry, I was critical, but then once he started figuring some things out, I was the, I I was like, guys, like we got to give him time. Like he's gonna figure it out, and he did. I think he actually until this game, I actually think he had a really good s- series because Alfari is clearly the best top laner, and he not only kept him in check. He was beating him in most of these games. So it's like... I, yeah, he played great. He played really well. So, like, I, I here's the thing. I still think that this this comp works. Even I mean, if you have one bad pick, that's fine. But it's not like TL, like, we're drafting outstandingly either. Like, I don't think the I don't think the Udyr worked with, the, with a lot of this comp. Um, you know, and I know that, you know, I know that the point is, like, tactical hits are and everybody runs in. But it's like, Everyone all you need is in, one Seraphine alt. Run- and then it's Sin- over. Sinforin on Udyr has also been a statistical anomaly on that. Yeah. So, like, so I guess it's, my it's point also, is I think that TSM pick. win this draft because of the fact that they just have a lot more options, especially if Huni goes tank. I, I disagree. I, I think, I think the, the like you said, if if they have to think, well, who makes the best? locking Gragas here? Like, I just, the Gragas pick is just so bewildering. I, I love the rest of it. I, I think the rest is fine. Seraphine mid's great. I have no issue with Zaya. I think Olaf still has his place, especially against a, t- a cop with that much CC. That's fine, right? But I think the Gragas pick literally ruins the draft. And it was, it's, I think, their last so pick. Troll. And it was, yeah, which just makes it even more audacious. And I just don't think AP like, Gragas works that well right now, but that's... If AP Gragas works, but it has to be into the right comp, and this isn't the right comp to play into it, and this isn't the right comp to play Tank Gragas into either. So, I just again, think Tank Gragas is better because he can still he can still disengage so he well. He can disengage, and yeah... And and Huni's played really good tank Gragas all year, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he's had he's had a couple. I think he's actually played AP Gragas too. Uh, correct me I thought if I'm wrong it was mostly. I think, t- I think it was mostly tank Gragas this year. I I could have swore he had one game. I could be thinking of someone else though. So, but yeah, and, and AP <laughs> Gragas though has been played like in the LCK. I watch a lot of LCK. They play mm-hmm. a lot of AP Gragas top. So like it, it's not like it's a pick that they've never heard of. And I I assume Huni's watches the LCK. Um, so maybe it's like it's one of those things like all right we saw it chested it in scrims it's worked well for us so we're gonna go it here because we don't think we have enough damage to get through this front line so like i i get the mentality of the tsm draft i just don't like it i think i think that puts way too much burden on the players and this is kind of that's kind of been a lot of the issue with bjergsen's drafts in general yes they work in your mind right if you you can picture them and how they work but see they've been executing them for the last couple weeks they have, but, but they weren't executing today. Yeah, I, I just don't think they. I don't think they play. I think game one ruined it. I straight up yeah, said. Yeah, I agree. If they I win think if, game they, if one, they win that game one, I mean, momentum the momentum is the biggest thing in sports. Any oh, sport. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. So I don't know. To me, like I, I, it, I'll, I'll agree, fifty fifty on game four. But then game three is a loss, and then game two is a fifty fifty, and then game one, TL wins. No, so, TSM wins. That's, that's, we talked about it. T- I mean, TSM wins. Sorry, game. Uh, TSM oh, yeah. won, okay. won. And then, yeah. So, yeah. But, like, the point is they both won one draft, and then there were two 50-50s. I actually think it's really funny that in the games that I thought TSM won the draft, they lost. But then in the game that they lost the draft, they won. Oh, I know. It, it is kind of ironic, yeah. Like, uh, and that's what I that's what I mean. Draft doesn't mean everything. But I, I think I think these, these drafts from TSM were not their, were not their best. No. Um, and they didn't play their best, which makes any draft look bad in hindsight. Because I, I won't lie, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? 
But uh, I don't know. I, I think I think if they draft this bad versus EG, I think EG it, like again in my opinion, I think it, if uh, if they draft like this versus EG, I think EG has a better. Chance. They have a better chance, but we'll see if they win. Um, I, again, I don't think they will. But. <laughs> well, we went so we went over about ten minutes, which I'm fine with. I think this is a great conversation. I, I want to thank you for for coming on. Give yourself a quick shout out, um, and then uh, I'll be heading into my next one, my next I, um, topic. Michael Termini. I uh, I play uh, e- uh, League of Legends for Temple University esports team. Let's go us. Hey, um, I write about EG on thegamehouse.com. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much all. I'm what's your washed Twitter? up League player. Uh, oh yeah, it's Michael <laughs> underscore Termini. <laughs> Don't follow it unless you want to see bad takes. <laughs> well, that's what we need in the world. More bad oh, takes. God, yeah. um, you can see me rage tweet live games. It's great. Well, I, I, I appreciate you coming on, man. I think this is a great conversation. Um, yeah, and, I had fun. You know, I'll, uh, I'll, ho- I'll have you on again probably during the offseason because – I think people are still going to be expecting me to do two uh, two episodes, so I'm gonna need I'm gonna need some people to talk to. So yeah, and I like I said, I follow I follow every team enough to uh, to you know understand what's going on, have strong opinions on them all. So <laughs> I'm always down to talk about the LCS. Well, awesome. Uh, thanks again, Michael. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll be heading into my next section. So yeah, I mean that was a really good talk with Michael. Um, he had a lot of good opinions. <laughs> um, but like I said, we're going to head into the next section. We're going to head into this next section. Uh, it's interesting, though, that he's picking TSM to win. I, I'm almost worried that that's going to be a curse, but we'll see. Anyways, here's what the advantages that I see that TSM have. Um, TSM don't die as much, which is going to sound stupid. And and I know everybody, like, I feel like when I use this, it's it's... People are like, well, of course kills, deaths, and assists matter. And of course they they also don't matter because they're not everything, right? Fine. I get it. I, I totally understand. But it's analyzing what's happening. Evil Geniuses were third in terms of death in the LCS this year. They had 269 nice deaths. Golden Guardians, you can kind of just write off. They only had two hundred nine, or they had two hundred ninety four deaths. But and then CLG, two seventy six. So for for a team that is not only a playoff team, but a team that won ten games, they had two hundred sixty nine deaths. That is seventy five more deaths than TSM had. Seventy five. Okay, so you look at that, and then you look at how many kills. Did Evil Geniuses have? 269 to TSM's 238. Now let's dive into that for a second. What is happening is that they they like to fight a lot. They like to be scrappy, clearly, right? A lot of kills, but they also have a lot of deaths. And they are weirdly the only team, I'm just seeing this now, the only team in the LCS that had exactly as many kills as deaths. And that's how they play their games. They are a true, this is like the most true coin flip team outside of maybe Evil Geniuses last year when Shizuke and Huni were playing together. Old Huni, not TSM Huni. But like, I mean, seriously, that is is as coin flip as it gets. 269 kills to 269 deaths. And... The thing is, is it's really important to understand that this is just the kind of team that they are. And a lot of their deaths are going to come from their solo lanes, from their jungle, from their support. And I know as, oh, well, you got to protect the AD carry, blah, blah, blah. Definitely was was fine. He was consistent. He didn't do a lot, but he he also didn't do a a, a little. So I, I when I look at this, I just see a team that that loves to fight. And when you look at their combined kills per minute, how many kills, you know, are they getting as a team per minute? 0.83 is second only to Cloud9. Whereas TSM are 0.71, which is fourth least. It's two big clashing styles. It's teams that 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 are willing, you know, one team that's willing to throw down, right? The EG solo lanes is Ven specifically. 
They like to they like to throw down. They like to be in your face. Whereas TSM, they have the advantage in the fact that they don't. They're very good at absorbing that pressure and then, you know, uh, finding their advantages elsewhere. And I think that's going to be key for, for this game. I think that in, if, if TSM want to win, being able to handle the engage is going to be important. The other advantage I see is just in mid late game in general. Uh, thanks to Oracle's Elixir. Tim is fantastic getting all this together. Early game rating, TSM and Evil Geniuses, pretty much even. Evil Geniuses have a 53. TSM have a 50.6. But it's the mid and late. TSM 16.1. Evil Geniuses 2.5. Now, it's way better than Team Liquid's was. But Team Liquid's just a better team. So, you know, we we kind of expected that maybe they'd be a little better than that. And we saw it. They were. They were a lot better. Especially in a five-game series. But this time for, for TSM... They are really going to have to lean into a a much more controlled early game and then allow their mid and late game to really bolster them. They have to play for it. They have to understand what they're going to do. And if they play an early game comp that works, some of it that we saw in TL, that is great, but they have to finish. They can't pull this same BS that they did last week where they're up by 6k they're at the drag they're at the baron and then they just throw and then they're like oh we're gonna go to dragon and we're gonna throw and then we're gonna try to fight in the jungle and we're gonna throw even more like you can't do that against this team it's not like they're like it's not like oh because they're so good they're gonna take it it's just you don't want to give them that tsm are just the better team overall so they they need to play a strong enough early game to hold on to things and then allow their mid and late game team fighting to just absolutely scale them like crazy. TSM also have a lot of control over the Baron pit in general. Uh, first rift specifically just rift Herald control black. I, I, they have the advantage there, but I, I really hope that they learned again from last week and from this season. Let EG knows at 10 minutes, TSM are going to try for a rift. But what if they didn't? Huh? Huh? What if they didn't? What if they let them think that was going to happen and then dum da da dum they figured it out and they just didn't freaking do it? That'd be a concept, wouldn't it? And instead, they waited for EG because EG thinks they're going to do it. And then EG's either going to back off and they're all going to go B. And then you could take it or... They're going to try to take it, and then you collapse on them. Rift Herald hurts when you're having to sit there with your back to it, and it's just slicing at you while you're having to focus on another team. We've seen it time and time and time again. TSM do have good Rift Herald control, but I want to see them use that as true control, not just being able to take it. I don't want to see any drive-by baloney where Spica tries to run in there and is like, hey, I'm going to try to drive by, smite this, and probably die in the process. But hey, might be worth. No, if you have a chance to take a tower instead, go take the tower. Or go take plates off the tower. Because it's basically the same freaking thing. Because it's not like Rift is going to give you that much anyways. Like, by itself. You know, if it hits towers, yes, it can be more. But without that, then... And then Baron Control, I, I again, this plays into the late game. TSM have the advantage, so why not use it? The last one is Warding. We know this. TSM are one of the best Warding teams in the LCS. It's part of the reason why Sword Art was an all-pro, and deservedly so. He he played really well this year when it came to Warding. He he drove the team. Um, you know, we didn't see it as much. TL took it, took it away from them, and Ignar can do the same thing if they're not careful. So, you know, TSM need to... Really use that advantage. Have the vision. Let Sven scare and Jizuke and Impact make their mistakes and capitalize off of it. Now, here are their disadvantages. EG are one of the best teams at first two, three towers. And it's because they normally have very strong lanes. 
They're not a great early game team necessarily, but their laning is strong, and they're able to convert those leads into towers. They are tied with Team Liquid for the highest first to three tower percentage rate, which we saw against TSM last week was tough. Now, TSM aren't far behind. It's only 61%. Or, well, it's only 17% the difference, but TSM have 61%. Evil Geniuses has 78%. But it's important to note because their laning, their laning is is strong. And it's it's that's a point where TSM have struggled at times. So TSM's got to be careful. They they cannot allow themselves to just bleed out in the early game. They can't allow themselves to lose towers for nothing. If you're going to lose a tower, so be it. Go take something else. But don't give up the tower for nothing. Also, they're very good at first dragon, which is something that we all know TSM have struggled with. Now, they were better in the TL series. Honestly, they were. They, they The dragon did not become a major factor in that series. Outside of the throw and, and the first game, but that was more because of the Baron than it was the Dragon. So, yeah, I mean, just first Dragon is going to be an issue for TSM. It has been all season. There is almost a 30% difference. Evil Geniuses are a top three team when it comes to first Dragon. They're very solid at taking that. And while I don't know that they're necessarily going to want to fight TSM in the late game, it's at least a level of insurance that if they do fight them and win, that they can take that Drake and continue to increase or finish, well, increase their lead or finish the game. And the last true disadvantage that I see for TSM, well, no, I'll, I'll, I, I, I just thought of one more. So I'll do this one, then I'll do my the other one I just thought of. Um, Evil Geniuses are actually pretty even statistically. I, I know that TSM won two more games than them, but and, and Evil Geniuses were much stronger earlier in the season, but there is still a, 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 a much closer... It, it, it will probably be a little bit more of a closer game than TSM would like. Or series, I should say. Um... And, and and when you look at it, right, like they like to fight. And, and, and if you don't allow them to make their mistakes, then that's going to be a huge disadvantage for TSM. The last one is, is, is champion pool. I do think while PoE is obviously better than Jazuke, if Jazuke is able to run wild and TSM are unable to control the more aggressive champions that he has that that is that is a true disadvantage because power deal is just not that type of player and that kind of aggression can be problematic for people it can obviously be coin flip which is what jazuke is but but if that coin keeps flipping heads because tsm aren't doing anything to maybe influence it it could be a runaway coin could be a runaway heads turning up coin could be a loaded coin there we go a lo a loaded coin and so tsm need to be careful of that that is a true disadvantage for them they, they, the, the mid lane types of champions into what tsm play more in particular what power of evil plays is something that we will have to watch for All right, continuing on, here are the five keys to victory. The first one for me is being reactive to their to the EG aggressive or aggression is fine. Let them let them be the aggressor, but be able to you know rebut it. Be able to to push back on it. It's going to be something that's important for TSM because they are very good at absorbing pressure, but sometimes too much so. So it's okay to do it, but they don't they want they don't want to be like just constantly reacting. Pro, pro, proactivity is good, but 
this team, EG will make mistakes. I guarantee you. It's not going to be like TL where they have five players on TL and only one of them, you know, will will int their face off by diving in on Tristana into three members without bomb and with no help from their teammates. Jazuke will do that. Impact will do that. Svenskeren will do that. Even Ignar will occasionally do that. So being reactive to it and understanding, like you can you can plan for over aggression. You can plan for it. You can have Spika waiting for a gank because you know it's coming. You can you can have him just sit in the mid lane probably once or twice a game. And know that Jazuke is going to try to push into that tower hard and try to make a play. You can do the same thing with Impact. You can even plan for Sven Skarin to be somewhere. And have the TPs ready. Have, well, everything else ready. And I think that's going to be important for TSM. You know, I, I I really do. Like they if there's one thing that we know, EG will die because they will make mistakes. And it is up to TSM to capitalize on those mistakes. Second key, take impact and Jazuke off their comfort picks. Echo, Rise, Rannikton, Nar. If you can take those picks away from them, it, it breaks a lot of what EG are trying to do as a team. It's not to say that they can't play other things. Obviously, I know they can play other things. But Rise is, is by far and away Jazuke's best champion this year. And Echo is a big problem for TSM. It just is. He it, that is just not that is not a great champion for for them to have to deal with. And and it is it is one of Jazuke's all time best champions, and he will absolutely lean on it if necessary. And here are his best champions Rise, LeBlanc, Echo, and Oriana. Compared to the rest of the league, it's just a, it's a very different feel. And it is something that, that TSM are going to have to understand and plan for. And there's another, there's another pick. It's not a comfort pick, but there's another pick that we'll talk about when we look at the champions to watch for. I'm a little worried about with Jizuke. Um, The other key for me is, is Seraphim. Very specifically, she's not going to be in the champions to watch for. She's going to be in the keys. Keys to victory. TSM need to keep playing Seraphine. She's a very strong champion. She's great for the style that they like to play. And 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 truthfully, if they want to play Seraphine with on, on Power of Evil every game, that's fine. If they want to play Seraphine on sword art i bet you he'll be better this week because he missed almost every alt last week i mean it was pretty bad they won't they 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 probably win that game in game one had he hit more alts because they would have you know i know they throw a baron and they make all these other decisions but he just missed so many alts early on and didn't do a lot of the things that seraphine can do to make it so that they were at like an insurmountable lead you know what I'm saying? Like even if they even if they throw once a Baron and even the Drake, instead of it, you know, giving TL the gold lead, they could have been way further ahead. If they couldn't have even. Been, there's a possibility they're not even in that position because instead of trading off kills and and other things because the Seraphine alt was just not used correctly, they 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 potentially just end that game really really quickly. That's how that's how good they were. 
and it's not fair to put it only on Sword Art. That's not what I'm saying. Like there were a lot of reasons they lost that game, but I do think that had he hit more alts, that team is that they they are in a better position. And so I want to see a Seraphine, and, and and it's fine. I understand if if they need to play AP, they can do it somewhere else. But the Seraphine is she's just so strong, and and against a team that's so hyper aggressive, right? As we talked about, a team that loves to have three, four, five engage options. Seraphine just stops all that. She just charms everybody. Oh, you got a Hecarim running at you with an Oriana ball, alt, maybe stun. Oh, you know, you've got Echo running straight at you, ready to dive you. Alt, maybe stun. Oh, no, you've got Rel, you know, Hecarim, and Echo running at you. Slams face on keyboard, hits R, and stops that engage. Wastes probably the ghost. Wastes probably the the W from Hecarim. Maybe even forces out the ultimate to get out of it. I mean, it's just... Against a team that just loves to just get in there and fight, there's probably not a better disengage option in the game right now than Seraphine. She just... Clicks R and says, nope. So that's key number three. Key number four is I actually want to see them pick a winning bot lane. Because if if Jazuke is going to cause problems potentially for, for Power of Evil or he's going to be on something like the Seraphine, I want to see a I want to see a really strong bot lane pick. I want to see the Tristana. I want to see the Kaisa. And if you can't see that, then I don't know. I mean, maybe he pulls out something like a Caitlyn. I don't know. I'm not saying he has or can or should, but maybe he does. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I think could be interesting for them. I think Misfortune would be fine. I think Ezreal would be fine. I just want to see them pick a lane where they win. I want to see them be aggressive. I want to see them push an advantage because if deftly can't play then the team is is not out of options but is in a much worse spot because you don't expect lost to be the one to carry in this situation but i think he might have to because it's a you know it's that all the lanes are, are relatively close i know I said earlier that they were that, that TSM gapped. I, I do think that there is a is a gap. I think it's a smaller gap, but I do think there is a gap at every position. I still truly believe, yes, Impact and Huni are close, but I do think Huni is better. Spika and Sven Skaren. Spika is better, has been playing like it maybe necessarily, but is, is, is in my opinion, better than Sven Skaren. Jizuke, when his coin flips heads, is maybe even at best with Power of Evil. When it flips heads. When it flips tails, Power of Evil will stomp him. I think Sword Art's better than Ignar. And I think Lost and Deathly are pretty close. You can even look at it statistically, it's it's pretty close. But the thing is, the team just plays better. They make less mistakes. And if you give Lost the opportunity to be ahead, as he was in some of the TL games, then that's just an even better advantage for TSM overall. It's okay to give Power of Evil a Seraphine. It is okay to give Huni a Tank Gragas. It is okay to give them an even or losing lane because I think that TSM can win the 2v2. And I think if you get lost ahead, now he's coming into fights ready ready to go. Ready to make plays. And I think that would be really, really, really important for them. And the last thing is, and this is, I, I, I avoided saying the thing that was cliche last week. I'm not going to do it this week. Play the TSM brand of League of Legends. Play smart. Play for the late game. 
and just get your wins. Plain and simple. This team is better than Evil Geniuses. And if they play the TSM brand of League of Legends, the vision control, the macro, strong macro game, the great team fighting abilities, then then that key is going to be very important. Now, if they try new things, like I'll be honest with you, I like some of the picks that they quote unquote tried, used in the last series, but they didn't play a lot of them and have them all down beforehand. They didn't test it on the rift. And I'm sure it's fine. You could keep some things from your scrims. No issues with that. But it just felt like there were a lot of things that they were trying to do and trying to pull out. And it's like, you know, maybe if they, they don't do that, maybe it's a little bit of a different game. For evil geniuses, you don't have to pull out anything special. You're just better than them. So just do you and move on to the next round. If TSM allows themselves to be over-engaged or they, over, they overthink some of their drafts or they overthink some of their plays, that's when they're going to get into trouble against this evil geniuses team. That's when we're sitting there like, oh, no. Oh, no. Are they about to lose this game? But I don't want to get to that point. Here are the champions that we're going to watch for in this series. Kaisa is important. They play it almost as much as we do. I think we're better on it. If we can find a way to make sure it's our first pick, we take it. If not, whatever. I wouldn't ban Kaisa or Tristana if I'm TSM. You're going to get one of them, and I think Loss is going to be better than Deathly on whichever one is available. So I think you just pick whichever one you want. And if they ban, they're not going to, they're not going to spend two first round bans on an AD carry. So you're going to get one. You're going to get Tristana or you are going to get the Kaisa. And it's not like, you know, it, they, they, it's not like they're going to get overly punished. I don't think at least for giving away either of them. I understand that they are eight and two. On Kaisa this year, and that TSM are seven and four. But I just truly think that they can take either one and win because I think they're the better team. So that will be a champion to watch for. Tristana, not as much. It's not as big of a deal as it was in the TL series, in my opinion. But I think they can go either way. The other one is Rannington. Both, both of them. Uh, and, and you know, in impact and Hooney, they both know how to play it. It wouldn't surprise me if it slips through maybe one game. That's probably likely, but otherwise, I wouldn't expect to see it. I if I'm TSM, I do not give impact Rennington. It is it is by far and away his best champion this year. Just don't deal with it. Just don't. There's no reason to. He's played NAR. His NAR has been fine, but he's 4-5 and five on it. His KDA is, is very different. His CS is different. It, you know, the, the only thing that's better is his kill participation because you have to be more involved. You can't split push as much. I'd much rather give them the NAR than the Rennington. Straight up. If you can first pick Rennington, fine. Take it. If not, ban it. Ban it every single time you don't have first pick. Just ban it. Rel's another one. They've been great on Rel. Five and two on Rel. Have a ten point three assists per game on it. <laughs> the kill participation, the kill participation is a little low for a Rel, but you know whatever. It's obviously a comfort pick. It is obviously a, it, it's a strong pick in general, but it's obviously a comfort pick for Ignar. Just don't give it to him. Just don't. There you go. Reddington, Rel. Check him off. Ban him. Ban him unless you got first pick. Ban the Rel either way, but, you know, 
ban them unless you got first pick. Then you can do that with the rare again. Uh, Rise, another champion. You maybe just ban right off the bat. Unless if you got something really that you're really comfortable with taking into it and have the understanding that you need to end the game before 35 minutes because otherwise, or probably even before 30 minutes because Rise will just be too strong to deal with. Echo is another champion to watch for. I can guarantee that it, it will get picked at some point. And, and now we're at a point where those are the four, out of my opinion, the Rennington, the Rel, the Rise, and the Echo are the four most important champions for TSM to pay attention to. And you're going to have to decide which one you're going to give up. That's also why I don't ban an AD carry. Because it doesn't matter as much as these champions for them. You're likely going to get lucky and they will probably ban the Rennington too. And if that's the case, then you go Rel, Rise, and Echo. Bam, bam, bam. And you just don't deal with it. If that's, if seriously, if, I, if I'm TSM, that is what I do every freaking game until they prove to you differently. Just take them away. Like, if, if I'm in game one, my first ban, Rel, for TSM. You wait, you see, second ban, Rise. You wait and see, and if they haven't banned Renekton, or if you're able to get Renekton first, then you ban the Echo. If they ban the Renekton already, you ban Echo. If they, you know, there's just, they're, they're, those four champions are going to be crucial in this game. Crucial. I want to see TSM make sure. Like, I want to see them picking Gnar. I want to see them picking Rennington if he's not available. And I want to just not deal with the Rail Rise and the Echo. Just take them off the take them off the plate. Make them beat you on stuff that they are not comfortable with or as comfortable with. Because if I'm looking at bans overall, I see those three, and then I am assuming they're going to ban the Azir. They're probably going to ban the Kaisa. And maybe they ban the Olaf. And those are your first six bans. And then that allows you to probably pick the Kaisa. Or, you know, you 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 you're you hope that they don't take it right away. Yeah, that's what I would do. Anyways, last couple champions here. Hecarim. Uh, it's been a staple for both players. I don't think Sven Skarin's as good as Spica on it. I do think that they potentially ban Hecarim as well. I could see that happening. If not, I expect it to be picked in nearly every game. I would still love to see the Galio. Didn't see it last series. Would really like to see it this one. I think it's a great champion for Sword Art. I don't know why they don't use it more often. I really don't get it. And 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 I'm just gonna straight up tell you that if they don't, if they don't, if they are unwilling to to take this Galio into favorable matchups or into favorable things where hey maybe a shield and a dive from halfway across the map would be useful, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't. I think it's a great pick. Obviously, Poe doesn't play it. That's fine. Just use it then I mean can you imagine if TSM picked a comp of Nara Rennington Hackerim Seraphine Kaisa and Galio holy moly that's such a good team I know there's not a lot of AP there she does enough damage it's fine It would be fine. Anyways, moving on. And that's actually going to lead into my Lilia slash Nidalee. I know I'm cheating. I'm adding two champions, but I don't care. Um, I think that these two champions will be really important for TSM. I know I talked about the Lilia not being a great form of disengage. That's true. But she does a lot of damage. And if TSM are going to play Seraphine, I would like to see one of these two champions. That gives you the AP. And it allows for Huni to play something else. 
then have to play an AP Gragas again, which, God bless, I don't want to see that either. Nope, 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 nope. No more of that one. I wish Elise was in the meta. That would be fun, but she's not. That's okay. But, yeah, Nidalee and Lilia, they're fine. I would like to see those. I think they would both be fine. And it allows you to still play the Seraphine. It allows you to still have the damage. Now, the different story is if they figure out how to actually use the Rumble correctly and if they can even bring out the Hooney Rise. If they can bring out the Hooney Rise, then, ooh, man, oh, man, things change. The last champion here, real quickly, is Yone. It's only been played once by Jazuke, but it does scare me. That is a champion that could be that could run right on over TSM if they are not careful. So they got to make sure that they're looking for that. All right, here's my prediction, my official prediction. You've been waiting for it. This has been a long episode, and you're probably like, oh, Rob, what are you picking? You guys, have, you and Michael have talked about it a lot. What are you guys thinking? Here's my prediction. I'm predicting 3-1 TSM. I believe that they will drop a game, maybe two, like not two games, like maybe game two or game three. I think they win game one. They, they had a sound strategy coming into it. I think that losing that first game in TL threw them off really hard off of their strategy. I think they come out. I think they beat EG with a sound, strong draft and strategy in game one. And I think they pull it off three to one. I just think so. I think it's great. I think it's. I think it's. I think that this is a good opportunity for them. I I could see a three zero, but for some reason I think Jazuke just flips heads. You know, 10 straight times in a game and TSM can't do anything about it. That or they they stupidly let the Renekton through and Impact just stomps all over them or the Aatrox stomps all over them or they pick, you know, a team that has zero disengage or, or very little front line and they allow the most one of the most aggressive teams in the LCS to, to come at them and just take them out. So, yeah, I could see them losing a game. But overall, I think TSM's a better team. I think they move on, and if you want my prediction, I do think they end up facing Dignitas, which is going to be quite the rematch, to say the least. All right, Academy update. They finally get to play on the 29th. That is when the Proving Grounds will begin. So make sure that you are watching to see how they do. If you like this show, please take a second to like, subscribe, and comment if you're watching on our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you don't miss another episode. I want to continue this to be the number one TSM podcast on all podcasting platforms. Leave reviews, especially if you're on Apple. Thank you. Please share this with your friends. You can find the official tweets if you're on Twitter, either at TGH Robert Haynes or at TGH Esports. Lastly, head to thegamehouse.com. And with that, thanks for tuning in. The show comes out every Monday and Thursday and is exclusively for your TSM ear holes. I'm Robert Haynes, and this has been Talking TSM. See y'all on Monday.